The money supply is defined as the total quantity of money circulating in the economy at a particular time. It can be larger or smaller depending on the types of money that are included based on their level of liquidity in the economy. Starting from there, most countries distinguish between at least three common measures of money supply, M1, M2 and M3. M1 is the narrowest measure. It includes all physical currency in circulation, demand deposits at commercial banks, traveler's checks and other checkable deposits. Due to its narrow scope, M1 is often referred to as the narrowest measure of money supply or simply narrow money. Next up is M2, the intermediate measure. M2 includes everything in M1, as well as savings deposits, time deposits below 100,000 US dollars, and retail money market funds. It is often referred to as the intermediate measure because it is broader and therefore slightly less liquid than M1, but not quite as broad as M3. M3 is the broadest measure. It includes everything in M2, as well as time deposits larger than $100,000, institutional money market funds, and term repurchase agreements. It is considered the broadest and least liquid measure of money supply. In the United States, the Federal Reserve reports M1 and M2 on a weekly and monthly basis. However, it stopped reporting M3 back in 2006, because according to the Board of Governors, M3 does not include any relevant information on economic activity that is not already embodied in M2. Now with that being said, you can find a link to the most recent numbers of M1 and M2 in the description below. So, let's sum it up once again. The money supply is defined as the total quantity of money circulating in the economy at a particular time. The three most common measures of money supply are M1, M2 and M3. M1 includes all currency in circulation, demand deposits, traveler's checks and other checkable deposits. M2 includes everything in M1, as well as savings deposits, time deposits below $100,000 and retail money market funds. And finally, M3 includes everything in M2, as well as time deposits larger than $100,000, institutional money market funds and term repurchase agreements.